Team CV Big Hill celebrating victories, giving you guys another video. And in this video, what I'm gonna talk about right now, today, is gonna be my biggest location, my best location, and how much it generated in the month of January 2022. Let's get it. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about how I got this location. I got this location as a referral. Um, the barber that actually cuts my hair, he was at another location before he's at the current location. And when he was over there, you know, I went there a few times and then he told me that he was going to another location. When he decided to move to the other location, the new barbershop, um, he told me they didn't have an ATM machine in there. So I asked him, you know, if he can contact the business owner for me or give me the, the business owner's contact information. We ended up connecting, me and the business owner. And then it took some time. I had to follow up a few times. She wouldn't get back to me because she just been super busy um, and things like that, doing other stuff. But she finally got back to me. And then when we finally, you know, communicated, I was actually able to land this location and get a contract signed. Now, some people might be wondering if I knew it was going to be a location from the very beginning or did I think I had to wait a little bit. For me personally, you always have to wait. All right? You never really know. Now, you can judge different locations and the location based on like, you know, how many barbers, specifically barbershops, because that's what we're talking about now. You can kind of gauge it based on how many barbers are in there. Um, you can kind of gauge it by, you know, asking how many cuts they do a day, things like that if you want asking the business owner how many people come into the business uh into the business on a daily basis um on the weekends it's usually a little bit more busy because people are trying to get their haircuts um i say all that because it is kind of hard to tell from the very beginning you can just kind of get a good estimate of like what you think it's going to do and again like i tell people all the time you never really know until you try until you put that atm in the location leave it there for a month or two maybe three and see what it's doing you're never really going to know with that being said, let me talk to you guys about how you can tell and what you want to look for when you're trying to put an ATM into an actual location. The biggest things are going to be um, foot traffic. You know, I don't care if it's cash only or not, if they take credit cards or not. The most important thing is going to be people walking through those doors and utilizing your ATM. All right. So foot traffic is going to be number one. Following uh, foot traffic, then you want to ask, you know, if it, um, if there's a cat, if they're cash only, if they take credit cards. Obviously, if they're cash only, that's going to be more beneficial to you. All right. The next thing you want to look at is going to be the surrounding areas. Uh, specifically, I have one barbershop, another barbershop, um, and that barbershop has a laundry mat right next door. And that laundry mat is cash only where they, you know, they have to put cash into the machine to get quarters out. And then once they get quarters, they put them into the actual machine. Um, so that one generates, you know, adds revenue to my ATM because there's a lot of people that go into that laundry mat trying to, you know, get cash. So they go next door to, um, to the barbershop and, and take cash out of my ATM. So things like that, for sure, you want to definitely kind of look into. Again, to recap, foot traffic, cash only. And then the third thing is going to be the location and the, um, to kind of caveat on the location thing, you want to definitely look into um, if they have like banks nearby or if there's ATMs like right next door. So stuff like that. Those are all things you want to look at um, to, whether, to gauge whether or not it's going to be a good spot for your ATM. One question a lot of people have um, is does the ATM have a slow season or a busy season? And the answer to that question is going to be determined by the location that you have the ATM. If that business slows down, then your ATM is going to slow down. If that business picks up, then your ATMs are going to be picked up. So there's some businesses where like, you know, during Christmas time, they might have a lot more, um, they might be generating a lot more re revenue. They might be making more sales, things like that. So chances are, if more people are going into that, bu that business, then your ATM is going to pick up. Now, on the flip side, if you have businesses where, you know, sometimes like the business slows down because the summer like car wash right like car washes they're going to slow down in the winter time people aren't going to go out and get as many car washes so chances are your atms are going to kind of you know decrease in um, profits decrease in you know transactions and things like that so the answer to the question is going to be dependent on the actual business that you have the atm inside of another thing i want to discuss is the amount of surcharge how much am i charging per transaction Plus, how do I determine that? All right. So the way I determine that is going to be, again, the location, um, especially outside sources, as far as like, are there other ATMs nearby? Are there banks nearby? Are there, you know, other financial institutions that have ATMs? You know, things like that, as well as the business model of the location that I'm at. For instance, you know, if you have a, a tattoo spot or a strip club, something like that, you're going to be able to make like a higher surcharge off of those because of the location, you know, somebody is not going to go 
you know, leave if they need cash. They trying to get a, a, a lap dance or something. They're not gonna go leave to try to go get cash at a different ATM because your surcharge is high at a strip club. Chances are they're gonna use it. They're gonna, you know, deal with the with the surcharge amount. That's why you see so many surcharges at like strip clubs, tattoo spots. They're so much higher because one that they don't want to leave you know simply because of that and then two the surcharge is going to be higher because depending on the amount that's being dispensed so um a good example for that is going to be like if an average dispense amount and on your reports when you have an atm business on your reports it'll tell you what the average amount that's being dispensed each time you know um money comes out of your atm so if you have a dispense average dispense of like three hundred dollars four hundred dollars even like two hundred dollars then you're not going to want to just be sitting at like a three dollar surcharge because you're not it's not worth it for you you're putting way too much more money in there for a little bit of a surcharge you want to be able to up that that way you're making more revenue on the amount of money that you're putting in the atm so i say all that because in the location that i'm talking about right now the surcharge i have right there is going to be 325 and the reason why is because there are other atms with um similar surcharges around that in the in the area where that atm is now there are some people that are watching this video and they don't know the typical um, ATM expenses that you have monthly. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm not going to talk about the whole startup expenses. I'm just going to talk about my monthly expenses um, for my ATM business at the moment, right? The biggest expense is going to be your profits if you're doing profit sharing. And what that means, if you're giving business owners money for allowing your ATM to be there, then chances are you know your that's going to be probably your highest expense depending on how many atms and the performance of your atms as well the other expense that i have monthly is going to be my internet modem so right now on i have two different styles of atm modems one of them i think i pay like ten dollars a month the other one i pay about five dollars a month so that's another expense and you have gas okay gas you're going to be driving back and forth um you know to different locations, filling up, going to the bank, picking up cash and doing a lot of driving back and forth. Um, so that's gonna be determined on the amount of ATMs, the amount of travel time, the amount of money that you're putting in, the, in each ATM is gonna determine how many visits you're doing. So if you're putting less money in, then you're gonna be doing more visits, um, things like that. Everything else, that's pretty much the, the meat and potatoes of it. And then you have like mis miscellaneous things, like if you're putting a new ATM in, you're gonna have to buy some new bolts, you know, stuff like that. But for the most part, um, off the top of my head those are gonna be the main expenses which it doesn't it's not too many one other thing I want to talk about is how long it takes to go fill up an ATM I'm not talking about the travel time that it takes to get there that's gonna be depending on how far you are from your location I'm simply talking about from me getting out the car putting cash into the dispenser putting the dispenser and in, back into the ATM locking up the ATM and getting back into my car all right the average time I would say if I had to put an average time on it I would say about a minute and a half if you know what you're doing it's gonna take about a minute and a half that's it for each ATM a minute and a half you do the math it's pretty fast all right you guys the moment of truth the moment you guys all been waiting for how much did my ATM machine not ATM machine but ATM make in the month of January all right the amount that it made was three hundred and eighty six dollars and some change and then the number of transactions I believe is like 119 if I'm not mistaken something like that that's not every single ATM I have about 13 ATMs or 12 something like that I think I just got one delivered um, so maybe 13 now um, and not every single one is generating that some are newer that just went in this month I think we put three or four ATMs in in the month of January so there may be some that make more than this later down the road um, this isn't my highest month that I ever generated on an ATM either I think we got up to a thousand dollars one time um so just kind of take this information with a grain of salt that doesn't mean your atms are going to do the same it doesn't mean they're going to do less it doesn't mean it do they're going to do more that's just me that's just the location i have this atm with um and i wanted to share that with you guys that way you guys know all right you guys so there you have it you see how much that atm made in one month in the month of january um if you like this video be sure to like it all right subscribe if you haven't done so already if you have other questions or you guys want me to make videos about certain things or other questions you know that you might have be sure to leave them in the comments below i'll talk to you guys with another video soon stay up stay blessed and much love